Uh, I call this planning and opportunities. We're at the final stages of planning field day. Field day is literally, uh, what is field day? <laughs> field day is always the fourth full weekend. At first I said it was the third, but it's the full weekend. And that means full weekend. Not to be confused with a seven-eighths of a weekend or 92.3% uh, of a weekend, but indeed a full-blown 100% of the weekend. Of the fourth full weekend. This year it falls on the 22nd, 23rd, um, and it runs from 1400 to 1400 hour time. So um, it's from 2 p.m. on Saturday to 2 p.m. on Sunday. Where it is this year is where it was last year at Earliesville Volunteer Fire uh, Company. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, <coughs> briefly. Probably now is a good time. Uh, I did talk to Christine, who is in charge of that facility. Uh, we have the facility from 2 p.m. Friday until uh, a fair amount after 2 on Sunday. So we, we got Sunday till about 5. Uh, so that, that is going on. Uh, setup Friday uh, is really something we need to talk about. Uh, one reason, and I didn't mention this back a while ago, is I am not going to be there on Friday for setup. Uh, I am the scout leader for Troop 17 at Camp Shenandoah, and a brilliant group of guys, and I think I might have mentioned to you guys, they took four out of six first place awards at NASA Student Launch, national awards out of 300 team, uh, right here out of Charlottesville. And it happened the same weekend uh, the UVA men's basketball team went to the Final Four. So you probably heard our news first, and then you heard about uh, the basketball team winning the Final Four. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It was one of those things. If it wasn't for that darn basketball team, we really, really would have got top billing for the news that day. But uh, it was a big deal. So what that means is, is there's some coordination that I'm personally going to have to work through with uh, whomever decides to set up Friday. If we want to set up Friday, I know, a hush fell over the room. Because, well, let, let's think through this. What did we set up Friday, like the last, as long as I've been part of this club, not that long, I'll give you three years, four years, this is my fourth field day. But what do we what do we typically do on Friday? We, shut up, we set up the showers. Last year we put the antennas up Saturday morning. So the question to the club is, and I'll, I'll throw this out to the membership, if all we're doing is setting up shelters on Friday, unless we look at the weather report and Friday is like today and Saturday is going to be monsoon, is there really a good reason to, to, to do a double dare and set up on Friday? Just the shelters. I mean, really, I mean, I'm thinking logistics and everybody's time is important, and I'm not copping out by any means. But what I'm saying is, is if we set up Saturday morning, and I mean morning, because I, I get up at around 4.30 every morning. I can, I can literally be there before any of you want to be there. And I can have everything there we need on my trailer, the shelters, everything. And this year we got two new shelters. Thank you. <laughs> this year we got two new shelters, uh, a blue one and a red one. Now these are just smaller open side shelters. So we don't have to scrounge around for GOTA, and we don't have to scrounge around for the uh, informational, well, I'll call it the welcome tent. All right, so those two, we have two new shelters for that. Go ahead. Do you still get extra operating time if you set up on Saturday? Do you still no, for, get for a while, you, you had extra on-air time. Only if you don't start setting up until 2. If you didn't start setting up I don't know. We, we can research that. I don't remember the details. But, but okay, if you, I will research If you did sort of a just-in-time setup, you got extra on-the-air time. All I know is they give you, yeah, I know we have Friday if we want it. But, again, my thinking is, and, again, I'm not trying to sidestep anything here. But I'm saying I'm not going to be there, but I'm also thinking back. We have never done anything but shelters. We might have done the antennas the very first year I was here, uh, the very first field day over, over communications. We might that day have done antennas on Friday. We did. But the last few, though, last year we did antennas in the morning on Saturday. And all the antennas got up. We launched the beam. 
Uh, somebody happened to have a 40-foot push-up sitting in their truck. So, <laughs> but the point is, what, what do you guys think? I mean, I trust your judgment. You guys are seasoned and you've been around the block a few times. It depends on how many people will show up on Saturday. Would we have, what kind of turnout do you think we would have on Saturday? Who, who could be there Saturday morning to set up? Sure. What time All right. Tell us when to show up. Right, what time do you think is reasonable? How long did the shelters take to set up? The shelters don't really take too long. An hour. We're all experienced with it. If we get enough people there, it doesn't take that long. I propose we have a setup time of uh, like Saturday at 9 o'clock. Would anybody object to that? Okay, Saturday at 9 we'll set up. I will have everything there we need. I was just going to uh, put a plea on that, that we could set up tables maybe first. Because I just want to get the network up and... Oh, well, well, well then what well, well, we'll do, well you could, here's what you could do. I, we will be, I have, I will have access to the facility, all right? So we, we can actually set tables uh, underneath cover if you want to and get everything set up and then move them out. It depends on what the weather is. Yeah. Worst case, we have a 10 by 10 shelter that if you just want to have everything dry, again, not knowing what the weather is, we can set one of those up in two minutes yeah, and you can set it, everything up under there. Then when the tents get set up, you know, we can, we can coordinate. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, I'm just trying to see the value of setting up on Friday and then everybody having to go out there again on Saturday to finish setting up if all we do on Friday is the showers. Is it going to be the same kind of location? Okay, that's another thing I want to talk about. <laughs> yes! Over at the fire company, they, have, they are building, and I'm going to use that term really loosely because my dad was a builder, they are building a training, it's supposed to in essence be the framing of a house. Mm. And it's about as square as a bowling ball, but they're, they're building the framing of a house, and it's right smack dab where we set up last year. Oh, wow. And there's a pile of wood there, of lumber, that at some point, when they get the volunteers together, needs to be there to finish the construction of this thing. There are also two cars there over by where I understand, if you go into the parking lot from behind the building, we were set up back here. There are two cars right over here that are also used for training purposes that are wrecked cars. Mm -hmm. I talked to Christine about it as soon as I saw them last week. I called her. I said, I understand this. This is being built. Is that wood pile going to be there? And are those cars going to be there? Both cases, it was an affirmative. Now, my thoughts are <coughs> this might be the last year I recommend we go to the fire company because they're both safety hazards and I don't like them, they look like crap. So I am just glad it's not filmed. But <laughs> it really upset me because, you know, we got an event going, but at the same time, it's their facility. Mm -hmm. So that shows you a little difference between where we end up going. I, hold on just a second. Wait. So I asked her to please, I said, I said, can we go there and, you know, we put tape around it or whatever. So she is going to have the volunteers at the fire company go out and put up safety cones and tape around those things because, you know, I, we don't want anybody to get hurt. We want to be in compliance. If you go back years ago, <coughs> we used to set up, as you, as you drive in on the right-hand side, right along that right-hand side. Yeah, well, that's where the cars are. There's two cars there right now. Okay. And there's still room there's around the shelter back there, too. <coughs> I don't remember. But anyhow, here's what I want to suggest. Between now and field day, uh, I'm going to be gone the whole week before. I'm going to be at Camp Shenandoah, but as soon as I get back, Friday night, I'll, I'll be checking my email. But if you guys want to take a drive around the back of the Earliesville Volunteer Fire Company and see what I'm talking about, if any of you have any suggestions on what the layout, what you think might be feasible for us, recognizing antennas and trees, and everything else, let me know. I can tell you that where that sh where that structure is, their building in the back, does leave us plenty of room to still set up similar to how we set up last year, or we could maybe incorporate it. But <laughs> the point is, uh, I don't I don't know about the rules if we incorporate that. But the point is, 
Yeah, but that but but that's the point is is go ahead and visit it. I encourage you guys to visit it, take a look at it, and just email me your thoughts and what, what you think. That way Friday we can have an agreed plan we can formulate. Uh, I will send out an email Friday night with the aggregate of whatever suggestions are from people. We can have a quick electronic discussion and by Saturday morning at nine uh, we can we can have some form of consensus of what looks good. All right? So that's the where. I probably took more time on the where than I wanted to, but it's, it needed to be discussed. I guess the point of the where is no matter where we go, things are out of our control. I mean, we could go to emergency communications, they could be running a, a ditch through it, you know, or they could be tearing up the parking lot. So no matter where you go, there are always going to be factors, unless you do it on private property, where we control the property. So, but as long as we do it at somebody else's place that isn't, you know, one of us, you can run into issues. But this is to your benefit, because those two cars and that structure is going to play wonderful for when the TV cameras get there, because this is an, an emergency event. You set up for an emergency. That's true. And this is real world. This is what, this is, That's we true. come in, we come in. Hey, we can, we can I can spin it. You're right, we can spin it. Uh, we can spin there. it. Uh, but, you know, I, well, man, fun. You know, whenever you do anything, you do the, you know, when, where, what, who, and all that stuff. And, and I thought, well, what is the, the what of field day? I mean, everybody in this room pretty much knows what field day is. But, you know, the first thing the ARRL says is, is ham radio's open house. That's the first thing they say, is is ham radio's open house. And I did, I'm not dead. I'm just playing possum. UVA ITS. Kill I'm me. so glad to know okay. that I'm not the only one that did it. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say it. Why do you think I said it? You're in the front row. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it's great having some relatives with really weird names. Because I can actually use most of their names for passwords and no one would ever hack it. Uh, so I'll give that some time. So anyhow, the deal is, uh, I'm going to not lost that. But, uh, but it basically says it's Ham Radio's open house. So, so that's in essence what they, why are you not doing that? But that's in essence what the ARL says it is. I know that we've always had debates about, well, it's all about context. It's all about having fun. It's all about chicken. I'm in the chicken crowd myself, but um, let's go back to this slideshow here. What I want to talk about right now, so that, that's the, the who, or that's the what, but the who is, you know, who's involved in this? It's really very simple. It's the members and the public. You know, it's just that simple. Uh, so it's basically us and the public, because you can't have an open house without the public. And part of that is getting the word out. Now, Paul's not here tonight, but I know he's done a lot of good work. And we've got a lot of legwork uh, laid out for that. But the who is the membership of the public. It's like, what, who, me? And so <laughs> everybody has some skills. But what I want to go through really quickly, and you guys have probably seen this till the cows come home, because when I first uh, tried my hand last year at field day, I really broke it down into the essence of what does it take to make an effective field day? You know, what are the pieces that fit together? Now, this isn't totally all-inclusive. There's another screen after this one. These are the top. You know, there's, there's this, and then there's more. There's two screens here, because I know this, this is not everything. Okay. Did I miss something? Michael, are we all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I got your name spelled right, right? This time. I know. I did a copy and paste on the last the other email. I answered a minute your email. And I did use your and I did use your I used this Outlook email address instead of his UVA or his Outlook domain instead of his UVA domain, Virginia.edu, and then he reminded me very politely that he is retired. So yeah. I don't know. I think when I leave UVA, I don't I'm never gonna look at that Virginia.edu again. Um, so what I'm responsible for is volunteer communications. Well, chairman is making sure all the leadership positions got filled and sort of coordinating all that. 
Uh, volunteer communications, so my job is to make sure that all the communications happen uh, between the leadership and the volunteer. And it also made sense for me, if I'm going to be the contact with Christine and early as a volunteer fire company, to also handle things like the table and chairs and the shelf. <coughs> I think it's responsible for me to own that because of, you know, the fact I'm already working with the facility and they provide the tables and chairs. They do. They do. Right. However, let me make a note of this. My chair is my chair. Your chair is your chair. <laughs> if you bring a chair from home and, and you know, I recommend highly, if you are going to spend time at field day, bring your favorite <coughs> outdoor chair. All right? Bring a chair. Chase Lounge, I don't care what you bring, but bring a chair for yourself if you're going to be there any length of time. Because uh, I will be there 24 hours, and I'm going to sleep in my chair once in a while. So let, let me make sure I understand this. We have no need to bring our own tables and chairs. Nope. Um, um, well, tables and chairs in the context of the field day operations. Does that include GOTA? What I, yes, that includes okay. GOTA. For, for GOTA, you will have a chair. Now, what we do want to be sensitive to is rain. If we have tons of rain, we got to be sensitive to chairs sinking in the ground and all that, so we got to be thoughtful of that. What about the food to pick me? The, the, we're going to have chairs for that. But again, the, table, table. Table, we'll have tables, of course. That's now, but what I'm talking, and if it rains really hard, we have access to the banquet room. So oh, we're going to be okay. Field day doesn't say we have to eat mm. outside. <laughs> it's all about operating. All right? So um, that having said that. Um, so that's where we are. We have a pretty good handle on that. I feel pretty good. My only question mark, really, was who is going to help set up Friday if we choose to do that. And I addressed that early on in the discussion. So I will be there bright and early with bells on. I have no idea where that comes from, but I will be. Uh, Publicity, Paul's done a pretty good job with that. Uh, what he did, he dropped by my office. He's not here tonight. And we have a stack of this year's flyer. You'll notice this year's flyer, I think you guys have seen it already. Much uh, less color saturation than the previous years. So this one here can be printed out at home with minimal inkification. Uh, you will not go broke printing this on an inkjet. So, uh, th but there are plenty here. This is 100 copies right here. So I'm going to set this right here over here on the end, right by dots and dashes, which my son loves reading, and thank you very much. We appreciate dots and dashes. So I'm grabbing that for Victor. My little rocketeer loves this publication. If you haven't read this, who, who has not grabbed one of these before? It's okay. If, don't raise your hand, but if you've never grabbed one of these, grab one of these. This is fascinating. Okay. How much did you pay him for that? <laughs> <laughs> no, this, no, this is really good. I mean, I'm serious. Who reads this regularly? I'm curious. Wow, that's great. This is one of my favorite parts of coming to this meeting. Anyhow, I digress. But I love, this is really well done. Um, okay. So the publicity, the word is getting out. I feel comfortable about that. Paul's been checking in with me pretty regularly. Uh, Larry, do you have anything to add with publicity? You had a email about your significant other, and well, my wife uh, had a friend who put it up on home, home alone, or home, home alone, alone. <laughs> okay, home or whatever neighborhood, the neighborhood, yeah, neighborhood, yeah. Neighborhood yeah. Watch. And also, she's uh, she has contact because of the women's four miler. That's what it was. Les Sinclair. That's right. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to do a personal uh, PSA uh, announcement on WINA uh, Monday morning. Oh, so Monday before the field day. Okay. Uh, and in the meantime, I've been printing out field day announcements and putting them up at Starbucks and Panera Bread and so forth. Excellent. So everybody grab a couple of those, put them in your neighborhood area. Anyway, this, there's a, public, a, a bulletin board. Any, yeah, anywhere with a public bulletin board. I live up near Earliesville, north of Earliesville, so I'm going to swing through there and grab the general store and a few other spots. Uh, so it, it's a real, this is a good time. It's two weekends, two weeks before. This is a good time to get those things out. 
people likely won't tear them down between now and then. That's the problem with putting them out two months before. Um, and we're also going to have signage on the road uh, the day of. So operator scheduling and coordination, Ed cannot be here tonight. Uh, Ed's giving me an update. We do have a Google form that uh, is created, and I'm going to show you that form. And we're going to publish a link to that form on the website. So you may go in and schedule your time as you wish. And I'm going to show you the form really quickly as soon as I'm done. Uh, we are going to be scheduling phone. And then the second column is phone slash data. So because there may be, depending on you know, what, what we're up against with propagation. Another category, and Dennis is not here, but another category, of course, is CW. And finally, uh, the category is CW logger, so assisting with logging uh, with whoever's working CW. Great way to get familiar with CW is to log for someone. Um, also, in addition to that, uh, with the, uh, the operator scheduling, this year uh, we're asking you to commit to at least an hour. You know, I didn't want to get too granular, but I didn't want to get too big. Uh, I think for a lot of people on phone, an hour can seem like an eternity. You know, for Paul and me and a bunch of other y'all, we're just getting warmed up in an hour. Right. So uh, I think my record was five on stop. But, um, but the, you, know, I, I, you know, for you uh, contesters, you know, an hour is like, you know, grabbing a glass of water. So uh, anyhow, that, those are going to be one hour blocks and you're going to see the form in just a second. Uh, no, 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 not again. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. So, having, so let's, okay, let's keep on. Invitations and Goda is well in hand. Invitations, 20 out, <clears throat> zero responses so far. Excellent. I have several Goda questions. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, scheduling for Goda. Uh, we'll be much more informal. Anybody who wants to serve as a, uh, some of you got my name. Right? <laughs> but anybody who wants to serve as a coach, let me know when. We'll work it out. Power to go to. Now, two year. That's our power. Who? Power is right here. Yes, we have who two generators. Oh, we do. Yes, we okay. have one. We, we have two generators to run everything off of. Bob brings one, is bringing one. I finally got mine back from the Honda repair. Oh, good. It only took four and a half weeks because they're out of parts. Yep. Uh, but so we have uh, we have two generators that can do that. Um, Last year we ran everything on two generators. We need no problem. We actually had a separate. Two years ago we had a separate generator for go. Well, but we, now with long extension cords we yes. can just plug in anybody. We were fine. Yeah. We're only running a hundred watts. Right. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, the location for the goaded tent, but I should. Well, you can, out. like I said, swing by and we'll have to work that. Well, yeah. I, you know, you guys get first crack apparently. Well, no, it's not really. I mean, the way we're going to do goda is the way we're going to do everything. I mean, we're we we are looking at the space holistically with the idea of. You know, I kind of liked what we did last year for able to pull it off again. Is basically putting we did it for storm reasons because <coughs> the weather was kind of spiritual, especially at the end when we were wrapping up, right? But uh, you know, putting the two tents, you know, end to end like that and making one big long one had its advantages, had its disadvantages, but that you know, was kind of cool. Um, right, speaking of cool, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention with shelters is there was an idea of putting like a silver tarp on top uh, if we want to do that, uh, depending on the heat. Based on the weather forecast right now, it's going to be humid, but it's not going to be that hot so, uh, so far. So uh, we're, we're going to see how the weather holds. It's a little early, but thank you. Um, the relationship of the goaded tent to the welcome tent. It's going to be, yeah, typically it's going to be as we did last year, where it's going to be like welcome, go to what I will call the remainder of the compound. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and, and you've got to say that, Michael. I mean, if you, you know, no, no, that, you decide where sounds, you want it, and you're go to. I mean, I'm, sounds great. I'm nobody, one, yeah. one statement. 
there are a number of folks here who either are unlicensed or who have gotten their licenses within the past year. Or, by the way, there's another category of people who've been licensed for a while but don't do anything. And all of you are invited to the go to. Highly recommended. Go. All right. Um, food and refreshments. I am not even. The one thing I never am concerned about with field day ever is food and refreshments. Larry, <laughs> we have no reason to be concerned. It was unreal. I did. I would say one thing. I've been very impressed so far. Last year we lost the uh, uh, fresh market. Fresh and but this year uh, others have come forth and given me some uh, debit cards that I've been using and we've got some uh, the usual chicken but also uh, there's going to be barbecue as an entree but again everybody should think in terms of bringing a side dish for the, the picnic itself for the evening and I think for that, uh, plus I've got sodas, I've got water. Water is very important, obviously, from a safety point of view for everybody. Keep hydrated, that is the issue. So I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah, Larry's done an unbelievable job with that. He, he sent me a detailed email with what he had so far, and I'm like, wow, he didn't feed all of Early's milk. Go ahead. In the past, Larry, and again, I missed last year, you would ask, people who could bring uh, coolers to do so, are you still requesting those? It wouldn't be a bad idea just to have them, uh, be, even though they're supplying the ice uh, at the facility, and, and that is a great godsend to have that available. But again, transporting um, ice to the site, it's our site itself, would be very helpful uh, to have smaller containers and, just so you keep your name on it so that we, we don't lose your your cooler. Yeah, I'm bringing three, three coolers. I know. Last year we had cooler, uh, cooler shuffle, so make sure you put your name on your cooler. Um, we got the cooler squared away, <laughs> but, uh, and thank you for taking care of that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, safety, Linda's all over that. She's been uh, emailing me quite a bit. Um, Safety is primarily making sure she has the checklist from ARRL and Linda has gone through and uh, uh, I feel like she has a very good handle on it. She has, uh, we're going to have uh, vests this year. Uh, the, primarily the, the big concern is making sure at one point somebody has that safety officer vest on and they have a copy of the checklist so they know what they're supposed to be monitoring and checking for while they're on duty. This is going to be sort of like what we used to call the floater position where basically whoever's there, if you're not operating or whatever, uh, and you can be the safety officer for some time, that's fine. Uh, nighttime operation, it's really not as big a deal because one of us will be there all the time during the night. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to doing night shift again. I really enjoy it. And uh, that's my favorite part of field day is just being there at 3 in the morning on 80 meters. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, the static crash. So <laughs> for education this year, uh, John Porter is not here tonight. Uh, John is going to be uh, uh, doing a presentation and a tour. So he's going to be doing a presentation and a we tour. Get we get points for that. Uh, we get points for we get points for that. So that that's what he's doing this year. He's already put that together. Any follow up on the scouts? The scouts are not going to be a reality. Uh, it was a situation where, as I suspected, uh, summer camp and just summer in general. But field day is actually not the best time no. to get youth together. Everybody's out. Together. School's been out about three weeks. On vacation. Stuff's going on. Yeah, it's it's really hard to um, Like I said, I myself am going to be coming back from a summer summer camp at ten o'clock the night before. Uh, getting home 11. Uh, Jim, are you gonna, between you and Paul, I feel pretty good about the radios. Who was bringing the digital rig? You're bringing the digital rig, Joe? Okay. So we're very, I feel really good about our radios. 
Uh, we got the band pass filters. Uh, Dennis uh, stepped up and said he's got, now just because you see, let me back up. Just because you see somebody's name here doesn't mean they're the only person doing it. Yeah. These are the people that you contact if you want to volunteer in these areas. So if you have any volunteering you'd like to do or ideas, if you got some idea for publicity, something we could do, you know, this week, or if you've got somebody that you feel should be invited that's... Uh, well, someone just to operate or stand by at the information. Yeah. Great yeah. people. Right. Uh, that sort of thing. I would love to have anybody want to help out setting up for the picnic. Uh, minor stuff, but a lot of the ladies in the group have helped me tremendously. And, and that's, you know, what typically happens is people are there gathered, yeah. and when something happens, everybody steps in and helps. And that, that's typically what I've seen. Uh, but uh, typically, that is what happens. I mean, this is a very helpful group. Um, the antennas. <coughs> Uh, we bought a uh, we bought a new wire antenna. Uh, which one did somebody help me out? Which one did Ed purchase? He could not stop singing its praises. I forget the name of it. I know, I know, I can't remember. But it was uh, it's an eighty dollar <laughs> antenna, and if you look on eHam, it's like you know six out of five stars. I mean, everybody loves it. <laughs> Sounds like Maxcom. That might have been it. <laughs> but anyhow, it's extremely highly rated and off-center fed, right? And uh, so we're going to try that because the Carolina Wyndhams were the Carolina Wolves. Uh, we did not have good luck. And uh, I am bringing my fan dipole as well. And of course, we're going to have the hex beam. You're going to bring your tower again. The club push-up 40 foot is in really, 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 really bad shape. Uh, my son was going to help restore it as a community service project. Uh, it was so bad I wouldn't even give it to a Boy Scout to sand. It was just bad. Uh, the two tubes were froze together really tight. Corrosion's pretty high. Um, back when uh, K4DU was gainfully employed, <laughs> Which was quite. He did work at one time. <laughs> um, Bob, you may recall from the uh, uh, radio shack at Pantops. Yeah. You had two push-up masks. Yeah, I did. I have those. Good. Oh. Those are available. Yeah. Brand new. Never been. Never Great. been opened up. Oh anymore. my. Well. Wow. Okay. That's good. Well, if you want to coordinate that through, I'm, I'm he's got them, I mean, and I'm going to be out of town. Okay. From Wednesday coordinate until. with Dennis. Yeah, coordinate that with Dennis. You got Dennis's email. Well, I'll give it to you. Co coordinate that with Dennis to see if he if he wants. It. Joe, would you prefer we use one of those? I, mean, I don't care. I'll, I, I can put mine on the truck in case we need it. Okay. You never. Yeah. You don't you keep it on your truck all the time? No. So. Why did it kill me? We've already talked about generators and power distribution. Uh, we, we, you know, my thinking is this: when it comes to antennas, when it comes to power distribution, how hard is it for any of us in the trunk of your car? Throw in some coax, throw in a few barrels, put your name on stuff if you have to, throw in a power extension cord. You know, don't 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 be afraid to bring something if it's never even a cooler. You know, don't be afraid to bring something with you on Saturday morning just in case. So no one will turn, no one will go, wow, you brought an extension cord? We're never going to use it. So uh, don't be afraid. If you've got a real nice, uh, well, that sort of segues us right into, uh, oh, and for generators, I'm going to bring like six gallons of fuel. Yeah, I'll, you know. I'll probably have close to seven. Yeah, or it, and those, it just sips it. That's, that's nothing. Um, so, I, you know, we, we had this covered pretty well last year, the generators. Uh, we have a new person this year doing the PC, LAN, internet logging. Uh, where do we stand? You, it sounds very positive. Yeah, it's all set up in my guest bedroom right now. And Excellent. It's, it's, it's so we um, need to go to your guest bedroom. We're going to fill in your yard. Yeah. It's working in the, in the guest bedroom right now. So, uh, I'm uh, working on... I'm sure uh, your guests are enjoying that. Uh, getting uh, mics. Uh, software set up to try to do the, the map. That part I'm not 
as confident about. But I'm gonna if you need me to bring a TV again, I can bring a TV again. Yeah, I mean, we have the hardware. It's just mostly okay. setting it all up. Okay. So, so, um, so that's where we are with that. I, I, it, I, I, I trust leadership, so I'm not one to go in, in the helicopter. Um, this is the email I sent out with a correction of, I had one misspelling for Michael, and I also did not use his virginia.edu domain. I had outlook.com in there, I think. So, uh, but th this is already in the email that you all received with the exception <coughs> of Michael's. Do you want me to send out a correction? Nah. No? Okay. Do you, do you get mail at the Outlook? No. You don't? Never have. Fantastic. One email address. Had it for 45 years. Okay. Okay. Or however long there's been. Email. Okay. So, so that's this is this is the same thing you already had. You have this in your email. There's there's no difference. So what it boils down to is you can see there's a lot of opportunity here, a lot of places where you can go to to help. The biggest thing I would suggest is wherever you're interested in working with somebody, go back to that email that you got from me uh, over the weekend and, and you know, click on this email link and email directly the person who's responsible for this area. The reason we did this is so we don't get somebody saying, I can bring a fire extinguisher and it goes out to the club and we have 20 emails that go club wide talking about a fire extinguisher because nobody wants that in their inbox. So that's why we're trying this way this year and we're going to see how it works out. But I'm trusting you if you want to help in this area, or like, like you said, Dave, you know, some, if you've got that, that mask that you can help with, you know, fire off an email to Dennis. So uh, just the, and these people are waiting to hear from you. So uh, I have a very self serving question to ask. Oh, fantastic. The, the graphics that you guys want for signs, for the tents. Yeah, I'm going to get that. Who do I talk to about that? Yes. I would talk to me. You need to talk to me. Okay. Uh, I would suggest Bob Romano. Bob He's Romano. an idiot, but he probably has an idea what's needed. Okay, I'll look him up. <laughs> Larry? Uh, I, I am presuming that uh, when we have our picnic uh, for Saturday evening, that we'll also be inviting the volunteer fire people. Yes, yeah. And so that's important to know. Uh, in terms of the amount of entree that we're purchasing from Wayside Chicken and also having a donation from Mission Barbecue. Are we going to need to bring any food at all this year? Uh, no, no uh, there's the point. If there's any leftover, I hate to waste food. I also don't, I like to make sure that at the end of it all that we haven't spent anything in terms of food. That means by you bringing a dish for say five to six people as well as uh, the fact that if we have any chicken left over, that we sell it for maybe a buck of peas <coughs> to take home if you want to take some home for right. uh, breakfast tomorrow to the next morning. <laughs> and that can be handled through me um, at the end of the picnic. That I think it, that's we can great. have things that can, you can put things in. Right. <coughs> so what are your to-dos? Uh, I thought of one when I did this to-do page is there is nothing wrong with practicing the exchange. If you're going to operate and you've never operated field day before, it doesn't hurt to practice the exchange a little bit. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, who, um, I'll, I'll probably just ask Ed if he wants to do it or I can do it. Or, uh, I'll go out and tell you what I'll do. I will update the web page because I've done a few QSOs, not many, at field day. So I will, <laughs> I will post what I use as an exchange. Now I know that you guys might look at it, a contester might look at it and go, my gosh, Bob, you're wordy. But, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I am not a contester. But uh, I, I have made a few QSOs of field day. I will publish the exchange if somebody wants to look at it. Uh, make up your own, but what, what I use, and it seems to work. Um, so first thing to do is volunteer. Look at the emails, uh, look at the areas, pick an area, contact the person, even if it's just to say, hey, I've got this, can you use it? Okay? Uh, practice the exchange. 
don't be afraid to volunteer to operate. Spread the word. Church, other clubs you're part of, organizations, folk you know. Uh, spread the word about where it is, when it is. And show up. You know, even if you don't volunteer for anything, show up. I guarantee if you'll show up, someone will find something helpful that you can do. Okay? And, and don't forget to take the opportunity to operate. I personally am really excited this year because I have a dirty little secret. I have been, okay, I'm a computer guy. We're for IBM 14 years. Big time computer guy. I have never been able to get a reliable digital station set up at home. Notice the word emphasis on reliable. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes it doesn't. And I have an FT990 AC, a really nice, really nice transceiver. But I have never had much luck. I've tried Windows, I've tried every, Linux, you name it. I've never been able to get what I consider to be a, a repeatable, reliable. I am looking forward to operating digital. Because I've never done it. <laughs> Who has it here? Who's operated digital successfully, reliably, repeatably? Like, I don't know what's going on with mine. I have no idea. I'm clearly doing something stupid. Uh, somebody's going to look at my, I, I would love somebody to come to my house, I'll make you a beautiful steak dinner with smoked salmon, and you can tell me, Bob, you idiot, that button cannot be out. That's it. Yeah. That's and you'll get a great steak and salmon dinner. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to show up because I'm looking forward to operating digital. How's that? And thank you. Question. Answer. Uh, would you please uh, remind the lady at the uh, fire company that we would like to have the lawn mowed? I will mention that. Thank you. I will mention that. Okay. Um, now I have the French disease, no signal. Why did I lose? You turned it off. I didn't turn off the projector. <laughs> projector went to sleep. No, this is oh, oh, oh. Wait, maybe the light's lost still on on the projector. So, yeah. Yeah. what's that? The light is still on on the projector. All right. Well, let me I try this. Way. Way. Maybe you better win that uh, computer. In a raffle. There we go. Okay, this is the. Anybody recognizing picture? That's last year. That that's last year. There's some idiot on a ladder holding a mast. There's some other guys on the guy. Here's our, this is our safety, safetyfication. See that? We have sa we are safetyfied. Here are two guys over here. I think I know this guy on the right. So this is the cheer. But this is how, by the way, for documentation, this is how we set up last year. The wide dagger they're building is right about over in here. Right here. Wait, that's in the tree. Yeah, I know. This is a weird angle because I'm not quite what this 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 picture was taken from like way over here. Because if you remember how we were set up, the ladder was actually over here. Yeah. Right? So this this might be a mirror image or something. I don't know. It is a mirror image. Yeah, it's a mirror image. No wonder it looks weird. Now the idea is that we're not going to be close to the the asphalt. Uh, we're going to be where we were last year. Well, we're going to see about that because one of the issues we had last year was accessibility. So we're going to see what we can work out. Okay, this is a real quick and dirty Google form I came up with. Nothing fancy. There's not a whole lot of checks on here other than you need to put in your email address because Ed Berkowitz is going to need to contact you if he's contacted you. So your name. <coughs> your call sign. So you're going to put your email in here. Then you're going to put your name in. And your call sign, if you have one. If you don't have one, you can put none in there. Alright? <laughs> AK4BS. That should have been nice. <laughs> AK4B. Oh my gosh, it's great. I'm going to see if that's taken. <laughs> oh my gosh, I want that call now. Okay, I gotta have it. Somebody look real quick. I want the AK4 BS. Barbara Streisand. No. Who wouldn't want that? 
And now, I notice I didn't leave a choice for no class. Um, but what is your operator class? Now, this isn't really vital, of course. We've never asked for this before, to my knowledge. But I think it's kind of cool because that will help us understand uh, a little bit about where you can go. It doesn't matter. We're going to be with you. But uh, I just thought it'd be cool to gather this just for data purposes. Um, and I, I also have one for not licensed, which somebody mentioned, you know, show up even if you're not licensed. So I'm on, I check what I conned myself into, click next. Now, here is the, here's the meat of this thing. And uh, let's see if I can make it smaller. Okay, so here, all I did here was something really simple. I know, <laughs> I'm like nothing fancy. Uh, basically, just a grid in hour increments starting at 2 p.m. Saturday. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, uh, 2 p.m. Sunday. So all 24 hours are here. you got to kind of remember the columns when you scroll down. Welcome to Google Forms. Couldn't figure out a way to keep a header there. But um, the first column is what I figured would be most, probably most common for most of us, and that's phone. And then Digital phone is the next column. CW, CW logging. And then finally, just floater slash backup. You might say, you know what, Bob? I really, you know, I just want to be there in case you need me. Uh, so you would check that column there. If you know the time frame you're going to be at field day, just check that whole time frame. It doesn't mean you're committing to operating that whole time. What it really says is you're available during that time. Do you know what I'm saying? Say, for example, you might say, you know what? Um, I'm, I don't want to start out field day, so I might float. But uh, before I leave for dinner, I'd like to get on. And I'm going to leave at, at 7. So this is an example of somebody just saying, you know what? I'll get there at 2. I'm going to leave at 7. I'll be there five hours. I don't really want to operate. Um, until, you know, five, so, I, you know, here I'm signed up for a two-hour slot, in essence. Everybody understand this? It's really strict. This is going to be, this link is going to be on the club page for field day, and I am going to send out an email, uh, or Ed Berkowitz will probably send it out, uh, just letting you know what's here. Now, let me show you something else I did. When you hit submit, thank you for volunteering. This can edit your response. So if you decide something changes, there's some change of plans, and you can copy and paste this link if you want, and you'll always be able to go back in and edit your response. But the point is, if you decide that you need to edit your response, copy and paste that link, and, and, uh, and you'll be able to edit that. Real simple sign up, nothing fancy, but uh, that'll get the job done for us. Anybody have any questions? How do you get to that? I, I just I saw a post that on the website. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it'll also be in an email from Ed to the club. This is only the Yeah, that's it. Who, hey, who's been, who knows where that is? That's not over. But uh, but anyhow. Will the, the Google Sheet show you if there's a What's that? Will the, the Google Sheet show you if somebody's already signed up for a time? No. No. That, that's a good question. The question was, will Google, will this form show you that somebody's already signed up? No, it won't. And the reason is, is because uh, we want people to feel like they can sign up for where they can sign up. Ed and I talked about it. And the reason we discussed it was he's going to be gathering this data and looking at what's coming in. And as he sees holes where appropriate, uh, Ed could, could contact those people. Notice I didn't say reach out. I hear reach out at least 50 times a day in UVA Human Resources. Reach out was a great song by the four tops, but it is not what you do. I contact people. So, but Ed will contact those people. And I, I'm on a crusade to stamp out reach out. Uh, I'm, I'm losing miserably. But Ed will contact uh, you if there's a lot of overlap in one time slot. 
and, and that'll be it. Okay, I've ran over my time, but I think this was a viable thing. I think we needed to talk about these things. And now we can begin the important part of the meeting. Larry has one quick point of interest. I, I, I guess Ed then is the one that we should contact uh, with regard to the uh, who's coalescing around certain time frames. Yes. For instance, like I would need some help around picnic. And yet if there are floaters, a whole lot of floaters, then I can contact them and see if they go. Right. The f yeah, the f <laughs> we're, we're registering floaters intentionally on this sign up. And that's going to be part of the email and part of the verbiage around the link on our web page. Is this isn't just for operators, it's also operators slash floaters. So I might retitle it for that reason. I probably should retitle it. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. If you have anybody that is not licensed that would like to get licensed, we will be giving exams on field day at the Joint Richmond Amateur Radio Club and the Richmond Amateur Telecommunication Society. We're going to 